Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm David Lyle. Jim Robertson is not with us tonight. We're going to talk about education, and we're going to talk about education at the Columbia Public School District, and you'll need to know some acronyms. You may have heard the acronyms STEM, STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. You may not have heard another initial series, and that would be Project Lead the Way, PLTW. But at the end of this program, you're going to know more about both of those and how they are being used by Columbia Public Schools. I'd like to introduce my guest tonight. First of all, we have the director of the Columbia Area Career Center, and that's Linda Rawlings. How are you today? Great, thanks for having us. And we welcome you to the program. And then Craig Adams is with us. He is the Practical Arts Coordinator. Craig, it's good to see you again. Nice to be here. Let's start with STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Many people, if they have heard of that, they have heard of that as it might have been used in the Columbia Public Schools, and particularly at Benton Elementary School. Linda, start us out, give us the brief introduction of to what that means and how it started there, if you can, please. So science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It's a focus today internationally of a gap we have in skills and jobs in our nation. And so um, starting early, in elementary school with a focus that really focuses on science and math as important and that really brings relevance to students education and so bringing that from the K through 12 and even post-secondary education um, is, is what we see happening. Now I know you work with the Career Center and you've been there you told us three years before we started the program mm -hmm. tonight I'm curious as to why Benton was chosen is it a is it an attraction for a certain population that seems to be more mobile to say let's keep them here I'm, I'm almost thought that STEM was at Benton was almost like a uh, not a uh, almost like a magnet type school situation. I think you're correct. It is a magnet type school in which um, we're creating a themed school that has a theme around STEM. Just like we have Lee, that's around art. Um, this is around STEM, and knowing that science and technology and math are, are extremely important. Are there other schools that have implemented STEM on the elementary level yet? Is it just basically Benton? There are. There are areas in other schools, there are teachers that have implemented STEM into their classroom. There are um, you know, v various different teachers that are, that are active in that, but it, there's not a school that's actually gone into the, the, at that depth that Benton has done. It seems like STEM would be perfect for when students get into the junior high and high school area, because if you're focusing on science, technology, engineering, and math, it seems to me like that is where they start to really narrow down their interests. Craig, speak to that as how that is or is not true, especially in Columbia Public Schools. I think at the, mili or at the middle school level, um, that's where we try to, we try to, our focus is on exploratory, you know, explore, exploration. So we try to um, have classes where kids can go and explore, let's say, you know, technology education. They can explore um, family consumer science facts. They can go and they can explore different areas in fine arts. But as far as um, what we try to do with, with that, that, that grouping or that, that level of student is we try to give them a lot of different options and we start to ask them things like, what do you like to do? What are you, what are you good at? And, and for instance, when I was in middle school, I, was, I liked to work with my hands. Well, I, I chose a path, a, like a, a pathway through middle school that, that I'm, I'm good in this area, I like to do these things, and it kind of led me to make some choices for where I was going to go into the high school. So we're, we're kind of gearing them to make those decisions for where they can, for the, the classes that they can take at that next level. How's it done with their interest, but also what they've shown that they are able to do through testing and then teacher feedback? How, do you, how does that all fit together? Well, the eighth grade, at the eighth grade level, we take a, a, a test called the Explore Test, and one of the questions that they ask students on the on that test is, um, you know, what do you like to do? Uh, what do you, where do you see yourself? You know, what career path do you see yourself um, going into after you le you leave high school? And they ask that same question when they take in the tenth grade. They actually take a, a, another test called the Plan Test, and they ask that same question there. They say, take the ACT again, and they ask them the same question. And what we're finding when we look at that data is that, the, that there's a, gr a group of students that they know, for instance, that I think it's 60% of our students say that they want to go into some kind of medical field. That's, mm -hmm. that's, the top, that's one of the top 
areas that, that kids want to go into. The second most important, or the second big area is, let's say, in business. Well, the third is engineering. Well, we know those numbers. We can see those numbers, and they don't change. They, they change they're, they're the same as an explore, at the explore test. They're, explain, they're the same at the plan test. And so we look at those numbers of what kids are telling us, and that kind of tells us what what programming we should possibly put out there for kids. And these would be students that are from all levels? Would these be some students that would benefit more from having a specific pathway to follow and other students who may be able to follow any pathway and be successful at it, but their interest and their ability seems to be narrowed to one particular pathway? I guess I'm asking is it, because I could see, and this is always dangerous to say, but I can remember vocational education was great for kids who said, I have a talent at doing something, and I have an interest in doing this, but this is not vocational education. This is something a lot different than that in my mind. Is that true, Linda? Well, it's career and technical education, and what we want is students to identify their passions and their strengths and to help guide them toward a career pathway. There are only six of them, so um, engineering and industri industrial technology is one of them. Human services is another one. Um, agriculture and natural resources is another one. Health sciences is one. So many of us could figure out what we like yeah. or dislike. And then there's multiple entrance and exit points. But it really is powerful when a student starts along a path and you can go in depth because then you get more critical thinking, problem solving. And then if a student doesn't like that field, we're not pinpointing them right. there. We're, you can go where you'd like to go. But most time, if you can catch a student's passion, they will do much more much more than you can ever put in front of them. When you said, what's, what's, was one of these human services, is that what mm -hmm. you said? What's that entail? I don't know what that would be under the human service label. So for us, um, we would have law enforcement and public safety. We also would have teaching professions. We also would have culinary arts, hospitality, and tourism. So at this point, when you're thinking of, of this and implementing STEM in the A, and we're talking grades, what, six up through 12? Is that more of a focus we're, now? We're looking more at a, a focus for K through 12. K actually. through 12. Um, um, our, our charge is 6 through 12. And because of the importance of science and mathematics and keeping it relevant, not simply doing problems, but b doing it with a real world focus. And once you do that, you have students who really understand the relevancy of it. So are they, t they, uh, are they part of a STEM curriculum then? Is that what it would be? Or, and I guess my follow-up question to that is what percentage of students then would be going through something that would be focused on science, technology, engineering, and math in the STEM program? And in a few moments, we'll talk about exactly the curriculum, the PLTW that we could talk about that helps understand, I, th I think explains mm -hmm. this a little bit better, but what percentage are we talking about? Well, I think relevance in, I think we're all trying, we're all striving to, to have to show relevance in whatever discipline we're teaching. And I think in mathematics, STEM offers you the op opportunity to show, to answer that question when students ask, why, am I, why do I need to know this? STEM gives you the opportunity to ask that. Well, because if, if you're in this field, this is how you would use this. This is how, and it's, it's using math or science or whatever it is in context. And I think that's, that has, well, we all feel like that has value. And that so all the students would be exposed to this. Yes, especially in that middle school, as you're searching for what you find interesting, that's just going to be one of your options on the wheel. This isn't a question that I, I for sure do not believe students should have to worry about this at all, but I'm going to ask this question anyway, and it kind of jumps ahead. If 60% of students in the Columbia Public School District want to do something with the medical profession, there may be oversatur oversaturation. People can study this, the people who are far away from elementary or secondary education and say, we don't need that number to want to be in this field. Does that play a role in encouraging or discouraging a certain path at a certain time? When I was in, the, when I was in junior high, I wanted to be a guitar player. And I thought that that's what I want to be. I want to be in a rock band. I want to do this. <laughs> Well, it turns out I don't want to practice. <laughs> I like the idea of playing a guitar, but I really don't want to practice and play the guitar. So had I gone down that pathway and I gone, I've gone to performing arts or whatever it was, I would have gotten there and decided, you know what, I really don't want to do this. Well, I've got that off ramp. I've got the ability to change my mind. And a lot of times kids will, I still teach. I teach, at, I teach for Linda at the Career Center. I teach, a class, I teach one of the PLTW classes in engineering. 
And kids will take my class and they'll think, I want to be an engineer. Well, some of them want to be an engineer. Some of them like the idea of being an engineer and they get in and they find out, you know what, I really don't want to do this. That has value too. That has a lot of value to me as, as knowing that this is not for me. I want to go in a different direction. And knowledge is power. You know, you, right. And I think we need to think about how large the medical field really is, right. really health sciences. So we're talking about patient care. That might be from an LPN, a CNA, to an RN, to a um, doctor. You also have research fields, so laboratory technology. And Columbia um, is a much different place than it would oh, be. Oh, absolutely. I mean, exactly. if you to an to, EMT you'd go to paramedic. Springfield maybe or to Camdenton or wherever, mm -hmm. you wouldn't find 60% saying that. Columbia is a special right. situation mm -hmm. for that. And so we're we are not in K through 12 education ever going to limit a student. Right. And um, I wouldn't want you to. I was just wondering though, somewhere along the way, somebody right. might say if you had 60% that wanted to go into um, teaching or 60% that wanted to go in some sort of a specialized engineering, that may be too many for that field to, I don't know when you get to the point where you look at trends as far as vocation and job opportunities are going to be and say, don't need any of that anymore. Well, I'll tell you in our adult programs where yeah. we have surgical technology and practical nursing and we admit those students, we do have to look at the job demands and we limit our, our classes by what we think we can place upon graduation. And that's so it's a proper at that place level. to do that. Uh -huh. and, and I'm sure the university has those, those guidelines as well, but in K through 12 education, it's open. And I, I would not want it to be done there either, mm -hmm. but I'm just curious if anybody's asking that. And another thing, when you mentioned earlier, it's human services, we're, we're a service industry and those students are our, are our customers and they, if they want, if they're, you know, I, I think I want to be an interior designer, I think I want to be an architect or whatever, we owe it to them to, to put that out there and say this is this is the path that if you wanted to be this if this is what you want to do this is the path that could lead you there but if they make that decision at some point you know what I think I want to be a teacher well then this is the path that you want to go and we and we have those pathways set up so that kids can make those decisions and Again, we're talking about the STEM program. Linda Rollins is our guest. She is the director of the Columbia Area Career Center, and then Craig Adams, who is the practical arts coordinator. Uh, off the beaten path here for just a second, Craig, I'm curious as to practical arts. A lot of people would say they would, they would think of that something different than what you are now. I mean, I would think, I can't remember what practical arts was, if it even existed when I was in junior high or high school. Was, but I mean, this is, a, this is a specialized field now. Describe what it is that you do. Practical arts is, is I, I, my job encompasses three different areas. I, I, have, um, the business I have business education teachers who teach, you know, we have personal finance, we have um, international business, we have uh, accounting, those types of classes. I have family and consumer sciences where we'll have a class called, we have classes called teen and social issues, we have uh, um, creative cuisine, we have uh, 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 fashion classes that we have also. But in technology education, I, te I have uh, teachers that teach you know, we go from things like the traditional woodworking class, but then we have uh, uh, Columbia, the aerospace class that we have at Hickman High School. We have uh, theater technology that we have at, at both Rockbridge and at, and at Hickman, and we'll have a battle. So um, it, it covers a wide range of, of areas. But and uh, that, so we would think of you know you'd be shop I guess teacher. a shop, a shop teacher. teacher. I mean, I'm sorry to say that. And, <laughs> and then for you, it would be like the vocational, because I, I, I can remember when vocational schools started to be part of a region, and mm -hmm. oftentimes you would bus children in from other school districts that weren't large enough to have a vocational school. But mm -hmm. I can remember the vocational school that happened. That's probably been 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. So we're way past that now. So when you think of explaining to someone, the career center means this for the school district. What do you say? So actually, we're, we're still an area career center, center that has um, sending schools that, that come to us for morning and afternoon sessions. We service Hallsville and Southern Boone County, Ashland, and some of the private schools here in town that um, can enroll through Columbia Public Schools. Our primary feeder, though, um, are Columbia Public Schools, Hickman and Rockbridge High School. Um, and I tell, and, and we are a shared time center, so that still exists. We deviated several years ago from the shared time center AM, PM only, and we made a deliberate decision to expose more students to career and technical education. So we um, now have one credit, two credit, and three credit classes, and then um, based upon the legislation that we have to follow in our mission, we like to we, we need to sequence those classes so that they transition seamlessly to post-secondary education or to a, an entry-level job. How many students from the school district of Columbia would go through and, and take some courses at the Career Center? We currently have eight. 
1,850 students and they're taking about 2,200 courses. Just have a, when was it, a year or so ago when the uh, addition was opened up at the Career Center? It seems like something happened out there just fairly recently. Two years ago, um, we opened an addition and then four years ago, we opened another addition. So we are now about 120,000 square feet at the Career Center campus, but we also hold um, classes at Hickman High School, at Rockbridge High School, and we're getting ready to open about 15 classes at Battle High School. How many classes, Craig or Linda, that, that you have opportunities for the students that would be under the areas that you oversee, uh, allow them to get college credit before they head out of high school? We just um, started a we're, just, we're new into this whole area of, of uh, college getting dual, what we call dual credit. Um, we have a, for personal finance, um, students can get three hours of credit at, um, we actually go through Un University of Missouri, Kansas City. And um, the, the program, the Project Lead the Way class, if they take the introductory class, which is the intro to engineering design, which is class I teach, and then the follow-up class, which is the one we'll start next year, Principles of Engineering, students can get up to six hours of credit at different universities, or they can get three hours of engineering credit if they go to uh, Missouri S&T, so. And then at the Career Center, we have just about 80 classes, and 36 of them um, are dual credit eligible. And what we find is um, we're on a record-breaking year right now. We had over, we had 300 students earn about 1,000 credits, college credits, last year, and we enroll in the fall and in the winter, depending upon which of the eight institutions that we work with um, want to enroll our students. And um, so far, we've already enrolled 250 students. Wow. And the power of having dual credit when a high school student leaves with dual credit, with college credit transcripted, they're more likely to go to college and they're more likely to finish that degree. There's some research that was just out that said about 50 to 60 percent of those students who brought college credit with them from high school actually finished their college degree. And they'd be more likely powerful. to save money too, right? Exactly. Well, as Absolutely. A, as a parent of, of, of college students, I can tell you that, that the, the, the credit that they receive is, is, is at, a, at a much reduced rate than what about you're... About a third. About a third yeah. of what we do. Mm -hmm. All right, I want to make the transition. I want to enter into a, some of the conversation about PLTW, but mm -hmm. right now, STEM, how new is that at the level that you're talking about in the classes and the students that you work at these levels of junior high or high school? So uh, formally, STEM was introduced there when? STEM has been around for, for a long, long time because it's science, it's technology, it's engineering and mathematics. Mm -hmm. This is another way to look at it and give students and really focus on real world experiences. We have been blessed in Columbia Public Schools to have invested greatly in career and technical education. So we've been doing applied um, education for a long time, but we were given, Craig and I were given the charge to create a STEM Academy within the next X amount of years by Dr. Belcher. And so we've been working toward that. We started with a first robotics team to kind of start that. We've had electronics and robotics and programming and lab tech and professions in healthcare. But as Columbia began to build another high school, we were asked to have programming there. Well, it's very difficult to repeat some of that program because it's very intense upon the instructors and in industry experience. So what nationally has been happening is adopting national curriculums, and that's where Project Lead the Way came in. We wanted a national curriculum that was standardized and recognized internationally, and that's what this does. And one of the things that we did was we, myself and, and uh, several other teachers in the district, um, I've, I actually have taught for 20 years with Doug Steinhoff, who's a physics teacher. We've taught a class for you know, 20 years called mm -hmm. Physics and Engineering, or it was Science and Technology. So STEM is not something that's at, we've been doing STEM-related activities for years and years and years. But this, this gave us the opportunity with the class that, that I teach called Intro to Engineering, this gave us that opportunity that we have these students that are taking Intro to Engineering. There's an Intro to Engineering curriculum that's offered with Project Lead the Way, and so it's kind of a seamless transition. So what we did is we've we've kind of upped the ante a little bit with our well, actually, quite a bit with our, our new curriculum. So. I had, uh, so uh, Dr. Belcher, Chris Belcher is the superintendent uh -huh. of the Columbia Public Schools, as who Linda was referring to. What's the timeline? When would this be, you would say, we're full bore with, with this program? 
Well, we're working toward yeah. that, and, and, and Craig's been great as a visionary and really working hard to create a STEM alliance here in the Mid-Missouri um, region to really get post-secondary on board in industry and business, as well as the K-12 through um, education people, so that we can start supporting um, STEM education. And so we're, we're going to lead, we're going to help let, let them lead us toward it. What I think will happen is then the fourth year of Project Lead the Way, um, that's a capstone course, and that those students would come to the Career Center, and that's where we might have the STEM Academy. Um, because we start large with um, all of the high schools having the first couple classes of Project Lead the Way. But, you know, you start large, and then, and then, and then students figure out maybe that isn't their choice and so by the time you get to the fourth year you have a less of a population and so that's what we've seen nationally has happened. You mentioned STEM Alliance Craig before the show mm -hmm. started you mentioned STEM Alliance and you told me that Kansas City has a pretty good of one mm -hmm. of these right now mm -hmm. so describe what they're doing and how you could see that implemented here. What, it, what's happened in Kansas City is that um, the Kauffman Foundation put quite a bit of, of resources into starting this STEM Alliance and what they've done is companies like Black and & Veatch and, and Cerner and different engineering firms and, and just it's a huge number of, of people have come together to to put in um, their time their effort their resources to, to help um, help better the the this the stem the whole the stem education in that whole area and what they're offering what they're doing is they're they're giving things like scholarships to students they're doing their grants giving grants to, to schools well Columbia is a is a, is a it's a great community, and, and I, th I think that, that j just from the people I've gone to talk to, mm -hmm. everyone feels like this is a good thing. Everyone that I've, I've approached is like, yes, we're on board. What can we do? And so what we're asking for is we're, we're, we're asking them to, to step up and, and, and help us with connections, you know, making connections from, from you know, maybe it's a, a mentor to a student. Maybe it's a, an engineer who mentors another student or mentors a, a group of students, or it might be someone who comes in and works with an after-school group or... It might be advocacy, or it could be, you know, resources, or whatever. But we're trying to, to build that 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 body of 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 individual or of, of of that organization that can help us deliver this this uh, curriculum. So if Craig comes out and he's he says he's there because of the STEM Alliance, you want to treat him kindly and say, what yeah, can we do? That would be, nice. be great. <laughs> Internships also. I mean, that yeah, would be a possibility. Well, so Project Lead the Way. If someone would ask you, define what. Project Lead the Way is. We've talked around that and we've talked a bit about that, but what uh, what is it? It's a, As I understand it, it's sort of a curriculum. This would be where you would go to know what to teach and, and what to offer for the students. I can best sum it up with what, I, what I'm doing right now. I teach Intro to Engineering Design. And what it, what it is, it's given, it, this first class that we're teaching is a, is a class that gives a kid Gives, gives my students a, a really good idea of what it is that an, an engineer does. It's awareness of what, what the different forms of engineering are. It's um, awareness of, a, of, a, of the design process, of how things are, how, how good design takes place. And we talk about, we do reverse engineering. We, we take things apart. We put them back together. We, but we're, we're also working with industry standard software. We're working with, the, with AutoCAD products, and, and we're, we're using... 3D solid modeling, and we're, we're uh, have a, actually have, have two three-dimensional printers that we can actually print whatever it is that we make in the classroom. So we're using cutting-edge technology to deliver this curriculum, and it um, it's amazing what what's what's taken place in the classroom. It's taken it's amazing the growth that's that's taken place with my students in that cl that curriculum. So All right, you're going to guess my next question then. Cutting-edge technology costs. Mm -hmm. So is this a budgeted part of the Columbia Public School District general budget, or is there other funding for this? It's an ex it, it, you know technology is expensive. Mm -hmm. Technology is, is an expensive program, and that's why one of the things that we're doing is we're looking at cost-effective ways to implement this technology. So the, there's a there's a, a twenty thousand dollar three-dimensional printer that, you, that we can do, and then there's also a two thousand dollar three-dimensional <laughs> printer that we can, so we obviously went towards the three, two to two thousand dollar model, but. Um, it's and it's not just it's not just the high tech it's not just the dollar it's 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 the st the software that we're using we're getting at a much reduced rate of what what it would normally cost we're getting the industry grade uh, software for a, a maybe a, a tenth of what it would what it would normally cost and that's one of the benefits that we have through working with Project Lead the Way there's four thousand four thousand schools in four thousand plus in the mm -hmm. in all fifty states that are involved in Project Lead the Way that creates a lot of buying a buying power yeah. for us that we can. We can then 
had the benefit of. So what will happen over the next couple of years, especially with using Project Lead the Way? Will, will just be uh, more and more merged into the curriculum then at the school district and with uh, different classes being offered that would be patterned by what's happening nationally with that? Well, we're, we're starting in the we're starting in the middle. That's what we talked about earlier. So we're starting in, the, in that in the middle with with our intro to engineering class. But we're going to go backwards for for the for the sixth through eighth grade, and we're going to have this gateway to technology, which is uh, the the six course, the six different spokes of the project lead the way at that at that middle level. But then we're also going to look to expand into what area fits Columbia. We're not just going to blanket the whole the whole program, but we're looking at what area fits what we need here and we're trying to be real specific on what holes do we have what area do we need and that's why we need that input from industry we need mm -hmm. that that help from the outside coming in and Linda you want to add anything about project lead the way and how that is uh, affecting what's going on at the career center um, well we've embraced it. it it actually is an approved career and technical education program so your budget question was a good one because there um, comes state and federal funding with career and technical education and so that's one way we've been able to afford this um, it also um, we, we have classrooms that are also already using that software and have those powerful computers and so it just made us more efficient um, project lead the way really is a program that is a bridge from core academics mm -hmm to real world experiences. And so we've been doing this in career and technical education for a long time. But again, this standardizes it. It, it provides professional development for our teachers. They go through two weeks of rigorous training. Um, and, and, and so that's what we needed in order to have it at Hickman High School, at Battle High School, and then the Career Center does Rockbridge High School's courses. Hmm. And what we really see c coming coming out of the pike is that the first two engineering classes being held at those schools and then it feeding to the Career Center for their third and fourth year. Um, we've also started the Project Lead the Way strand for biomedical sciences and since that's healthcare is a, is a big push here in Columbia. And so that only is four, four classes and those two will be offered at Hickman and Battle and, and the Career Center and we'll feed the, the fourth year class at the Career Center for that too. And they receive they can receive dual credit also for those classes. Yeah. For the biomedical, they actually receive three hours of um, college credit for each of the four classes. Mm -hmm. I'll have to ask you to be brief on this, and we've saved one element here in way too short a time to talk about this, but teachers adopt to this well, and they, they uh, like this and support this wholly? I, the, the two weeks of training that I went to, I, uh, and my, my other teachers, we have three other teachers that are doing the same program. It was the best profession, and I've 20, this is my 25th year of teaching, and I've done a lot of professional development. This is the best, that was the best professional development that I had ever, I'd ever gone to. It was, it was a situation where we did eight to 10 hours of classwork a day, and then have five, we'd have five hours of homework at night trying to get, and it just, but it, you just, you were immersed in it. It was, it was the best PD that I ever gone to. And what's great is that cr teachers are always asked to um, look at their curriculum to match the next standards that are coming down. Well, the common core standards for math and language arts are here. The next generation standards for science are here. Um, what's really nice about this is that at the national level, they've already been incorporated in this curriculum. So it's done at a level of rigor um, that's quite high. Thank you both for being here. We're out of time, but appreciate your insights, and you've helped us learn a lot about what's going on with learning at Columbia Public Schools. Linda Rawlings, who is the director of the Columbia Area Career Center, and Thank Craig you. Adams, who is the practical arts coordinator. And we appreciate your time tonight. Join us again for the next show with the League of Women Voters presentation.